Yes, it was a camp that actually 200 people from Lodge were taken there, and everybody had to have a profession. And I, s because I was working in a factory making uh, ch uh, ch children's uh, wooden uh, toys, and I said, I'm a carpenter. So they asked me to show my hands. And actually, my hands were not carpenter hands. So the man that actually he had to make the decision, he said, uh, you are a carpenter, I am a musician. But uh, never mind, go. We arrived there, uh, it was a small camp. We had only six guards guarding 200 people. And uh, slowly we start to build up the beginning defense. The, the Germans, will, they lived in ground floor and we lived on the first floor in the same building. And because we were the youngest, six boys, they decided to leave us in the camp, not to go to the coal mine, only to work in the camp, cleaning, preparation for, 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 for dinner, and, and so on. And I don't know, I had an instinct of survival. And I was thinking to myself, it's too good to be true. I'm doing nothing. I'm not working at all. Food wasn't too bad. We had actually uh, three times a day we used to get food because that was not a concentration camp as such, only a, a working camp. People used to work in the coal mine, so they had to give them a reasonable food, otherwise they would not be able to work. I said to myself, sooner or later something happened to us because I am not productive and I'm doing nothing. Is it a coincidence? Is it an instinct? You call it whatever you like, but that saved me again. I went to the head of this commando that used to go to work, and he was a well-known boxer from Lodge. A reasonable man. He did not do any, any harm to anybody. Matter of fact, he survived, <coughs> lived in America, and uh, nobody touched him. And I said to him, I decided I want to go to work with everybody else. He said to me, you must be crazy. You got here a terrific job. You're doing nothing all day, sitting in the sunshine and having good food. And why do you have to go to work in a coal mine? Maybe it was just, you know, I would like to have some excitement or something. I said, <coughs> I'd rather go. So I went, and my uh, friend Itzhak went. Two days later, a truck arrived from Auschwitz, and whoever was in the camp, is a sick or young or whatever, they took away and they disappeared. And would I s not go to work, most probably they will take me away then too. So this the second time that, that just survived by coincidence. What was it like working in the coal mine? Well, it was a terrible work, you know, dark, pitch dark, you know, few hundred meters underground, dusty, and uh, a lot of people that uh, older than me, they, uh, they really had hard work. They gave me a task of standing next to a conveyor belt, make sure that there will be no blockage as far as the coals are transporting from one place to the other. And uh, it wasn't too bad. How did the guards treat you? There were no guards there underground. We had only foremen, most, most probably Polish or, or other nationalities, they were foremen in the, in the coal mine. The guards were actually only uh, in the morning when they took us from the camp to the, we walked about half an hour or so from the camp to the coal mine, and then in the, in the evening back from the coal mine to the camp. Those guards there were reasonable. They were actually not SS people, only they all the soldiers that they took them up from front and they put them in charge of uh, guarding the, the prisoners. So they knew that the war is coming to an end already. That was January 1945. Uh, they behaved reasonable. They were not cruel, no. Because the, 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 the commandant of the camp, in his first speech, he said that forget everything what's happened till now. You came here to work, and as long as you do your job, you will be, you'll be treated as such. What was the name of that commandant? 
His name was Bonnie Good. Could you spell that, please? B O G I N I G U T. In 19, January 1945, the Russian front came close to the place that we stay there. And they decided to evacuate the place and they took us to the train station. The Germans. The Germans. And they took us to Austria, to a place called, a camp called Mauthausen.